Hey, what's going on guys? In this video we're going to talk a little bit about compression and archiving on Linux and Unix systems, specifically using tar. Tar is a very old command from the 1970s. It actually stands for tape archive, back when that was the only way to archive anything. I'm basically going to split this video into sections. The first is going to be just a tiny bit of background. The second is going to be practical commands. We're really just going to cover the single most common tar command that you'll need, and you'll need it all the time, to both archive and compress, and then unarchive and decompress files. So if you want to send a file to someone, really a directory full of files, you'll archive that and then compress it. And then uh, I'll show you how to do sort of the inverse operation on the on the other end. Tar comes with an enormous amount of options. If you just take a quick look at uh, the man page, I'm just going to page down here. It's enormous. The amount of options here are enough to kind of confuse anyone. You'll never know this stuff by heart. And there's actually even an XKCD about it, which sort of makes fun of the fact that there's so many switches and knobs on tar that often just remembering like simple commands can be kind of difficult that you just like Google for what you need at that at that moment. But the goal of this video is to really just show you the very basics to show you the, the two commands that are going to cover like 95% of your tar usage. And for everything else, you know, just check the man page or Google around or what have you. In this joke, of course, uh, one valid tar command disarms the bomb. And uh, unfortunately, even even practiced Unix people are like, I'm going to just check on the order of those, or tar command fails the first few times for some weird reason before you get it right. It's totally common, so don't feel stupid. Okay, we're going to cover the, the basic two commands, but first we're going to just talk very quickly about the difference between archiving and compression. So if we take a look here, we'll just actually tree our current directory. So you can see we're sitting in the documents directory, and it contains another directory called important docs with some very important work-related documents here, and some other documents in, inside of the top level of documents. Archiving is the process of taking all of these files and directories and creating a single file, more or less, on the file system that contains all of those things. Uh, so most people think of archiving and compression as like a, a single thing because like commands like zip uh, made that sort of thing popular where you both archive things into a single file where you grab this entire documents directory and shove it into something that's a single file like documents.tar or documents.zip. But compression itself is actually something else. Compression is when you essentially use a very clever couple of algorithms to look for patterns, repeating patterns inside files, and then you basically save that space. The more a simple pattern is repeated, the more space you can save through some mathematical trickery. So compression is making files smaller, and archiving really is just taking many files and directories and creating one logical file out of them, which can then be sort of expanded back into those directories and files on the other side. Archiving specifically is really useful for especially things like FTP. If you're ever uploading like website files, um, a lot of people and companies still use FTP. It's a terrible, horrible, slow protocol. And the problem with FTP is enormous protocol overhead so that each file actually takes quite long to upload. So for each file that you upload over FTP, FTP says, hey, what's the name of the file that you want? Oh, it's this name. Oh, cool. All right, start giving me the file. Okay, and then you give it the file, and then there's some more talk about that file. Okay, I'm going to list that directory for you again. Okay, you want to upload a new file? Okay, upload the new file. And then you give the next file name and the size and everything, and then you send the data. So for FTP, if you've got a thousand files versus the same files in a single archive, you're talking like just an enormous time difference in, in upload time to, let's say, that web server over FTP. And I mean enormous. So let's get out of the documents directory for a second. So we're just, uh, we're just in our home directory here. And we'll tree documents just so you see it one more time. So that's what the documents directory looks like. Our tar command, uh, we're, I'm just going to kind of take you through it. So obviously command, the program name is tar, and then the options we want, z, c, v, f. So we'll start with f. Um, that's the last one because it takes uh, another argument, which is the file name. So this means the file name for the archive, the archive file, is going to be docs.tar.gz. So this is what we're actually creating with the commands. We're taking the documents directory and we're creating a 
brand new docs.tar.gz file, which is the archive file, and that's what f is telling you. v is verbose, which means we're going to get one line of output for each file that we are archiving and compressing. c is for create, we're creating a new archive. And z is for zipping, or it's really for gzipping. Uh, we're going to use the gzip program which you could use separately, you don't have to use it with tar, so gzip is its own program, uh, but we're going to use that to compress the archive as well, so that we're basically combining those two steps that I talked about before. We are compressing them with the z, zipping them, gzip, and creating an archive at the same time, so creating a single file from many files and directories. So we're doing both at the same time, and that's why we say docs.tar now, you can give this any extension you want, but tar.gz is a friendly way to let uh, fellow sysadmins know what they're dealing with and how to how to uncompress and unarchive it. So docs.tar, it's an archive, .gz, it's gzipped. And this is our directory that we're going to take and do that to. So let's go ahead and do that. If I leave off the V, I don't get all this output. I simply It simply returns when it's done. On remote machines, I recommend, uh, especially if you're doing like large archiving and compression jobs, to leave out the V because um, it can sometimes take longer for this thing, for the output to get to you than actually the job would take. So it can just be kind of annoying if you're on a slow connection waiting for you know 10,000 lines of output to come over SSH or something. So on remote machines, I generally leave out the V, uh, unless there's a specific reason that I want to do something with the V, like count lines or something else. If we, I'm so sorry I did that. Um, if we list again where we are, you can now see the docs.tar.gz compressed archive that we just created. And I'm going to move that into the decompression chamber. So we'll just, uh, and if we enter our decompression chamber now, we've got our docs.tar.gz file here. And we're going to unarchive and decompress this thing by saying it's gzipped. We're going to extract it, x for extract. We want verbosity this time. I guess we'll leave out verbosity so you can see what no output looks like. Uh, ZXF and then the, uh, the archive file name, which is simply docs.tar.gz. This has created the same documents directory here in our decompression chamber. And you can see if I just tree that, it's exactly the same thing as what went in. I really doubt we got much compression. There really wasn't much in that directory, but let's have a look. 1.4 megs and docstar gz 1.4 megs. We, we've saved essentially nothing by compressing it. But obviously for file formats that lend themselves to compression, you'll see a lot. I mean, so if you've got a if you've got a directory full of enormous like plain text files, you'll see quite a bit of compression. You'll have a much smaller archive, compressed archive size than the directory. Obviously you can see in, in, in this case, we saved uh, absolutely nothing. Okay, so why don't we uh, clean up the documents directory and also remove that and we'll go back out so we're home again. And we're gonna do something um, something terrible now. I'm going to show you what not to do now. And that is creating a tar bomb. Don't call the police yet. Uh, I'm actually going to show you how to do this incorrectly just to demonstrate a common error. If I go into the documents directory and type this, uh, actually, well, so what's different about this compared to our first uh, compressing and archiving command? Well, it's tar and it uses the same options, but what I'm saying is create a file named tarbomb and instead of pointing to some inner directory like important docs, or in our case, we were sitting in our home directory and we pointed this at documents. If I say this directory, so compress this current directory, uh, this actually won't work um, by creating the tarbomb in this directory, the directory is changing as I'm trying to read it and it just doesn't work. So um, what we actually need is the thing that I originally typed, which is, this is the shortcut for the directory above this one. So this goes back to our home directory. So essentially this is saying in the directory above this, create a tarbomb.tar.gz file using this directory as the base, which we're gonna run this tar zcf on. So if I do that, I'm creating a tarbomb and a tarbomb 
is a directory that's compressed as if you were sitting in the directory like this. So if I'm sitting in a directory and I type ls or list, that's sort of what is going to be decompressed. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So we're going to move, uh, move the tar bomb into the decompression chamber. I like how this terminology is starting to match up. So if I say tar, do you still remember? ZX, VF, the tar bomb. This is going to extract the tar bomb. And it's a tar bomb for this reason, because it just blows up in your face as soon as you uh, decompress it. So the idea is, if you're going to create an archive, generally you want to do it from just outside of some kind of containing directory, so that the poor sysadmin who decompresses uh, and unarchives your file uh, doesn't have this happen. I mean, we're in an empty directory, so it's no big deal, but suddenly there's like seven randomly named files in here and um, this this sort of thing can be really annoying if uh, like if you're working let's say for a hosting company or something and you're you're in the web server sort of like root directory so you're in var dub 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 and you know you've got like maybe 50 or 100 or 500 websites there and you're trying to unarchive something and you're a new sysadmin, so you don't think, geez, I'm just to be sure I'm going to create a directory and enter it before doing this. Well, this can happen. I mean, if you've got an archive with a couple hundred files in it, you now have hundreds of files littering your var www directory, and you sort of have to go in and clean up after this. So it's a very good sysadmin etiquette. Don't create tar bombs always compress from outside of a directory. So if we want to compress documents, don't compress it from inside. Compress it with the compressor from one directory above, essentially. So have a containing directory sort of wrapping your archive. So this is nice again. Uh, why is this not... Tar Oops, I'm extracting. That's why. What I actually want to do is create. So this is being nice because we're outside of documents and we're just going to do documents so that when someone uncompresses it, they'll just have another documents directory sitting there. Just to give you a quick example of this, um, one of the things I noticed, um, I worked for like a web security company last year, and one of the things I noticed, I dealt a lot with sites like WordPress and Joomla. So I've actually downloaded uh, both of them to show you, get rid of that, uh, as if we were just doing it now, um, we're going to uncompress the latest.tar.gz file. That's the latest WordPress version, or at least it was whenever I downloaded it. So we'll say z extract vf. We'll actually leave away the v because it's super verbose. Actually, I'll show you the v and I won't for Joomla. Anyway, zxvf latest. So you can see this is all creating a nice little WordPress directory. Actually, we won't treat it. We'll just list WordPress. Okay, and that's our WordPress directory. So this is what our downloads thing looks like right now, right? We've got a couple of files in here. Everything is still good. Now, it's a zip file, not a tar, but it's the same idea. If we unzip Joomla, as you can see, uh, it's extracted every one of these uh, one of these directories out uh, without a containing directory. So we are now left with a completely, it just sort of vomits directories and files into whatever directory you happen to be sitting in when you unsuspectingly begin to uh, unarchive and uncompress it. So you can see, uh, there's still, all of our files are still here. I mean, this file was here before, and the WordPress directory was here, and what else? Uh, obviously, the, the archives themselves. But other than that, Joomla has decided to simply uh, vomit like 17 directories into wherever we just were. This is really annoying, right? Like if you're sitting somewhere and this 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 happens, this is an annoying mess to like have to clean up. So let that be a strong lesson and uh, don't do this to other sysadmins. When you compress and archive something, do it from outside of that directory. It's sort of more intuitive to type in that way anyway. So again, the commands that we are talking about here are, this is the uncompressing command. This is the friendly compressing command. So you can see the difference is really just the, the zip. This is adding gzip for compression. This is x for extract and c for create a new archive. 
Verbose, you can leave this out if you don't want to see all this output. And F is the archive file, and so then you pass it an archive file name. In the case of extracting an archive, you're passing it an existing archive file name, so whatever the tar.gz file is. In the case of creating a new archive, you simply pass it the archive file name of the output file that you would like when the archiving and compression are done. And you also pass it an input file or directory name, which it's going to take and archive and compress. So there you have it. These are the very basics of both the concepts of archiving and compression as two separate uh, and distinct things. The two most common tar commands, you're basically going to find tar on any Unix system. That said, I think I can leave you here. So remember to subscribe if this video helped you, and also check out Tutorial Linux on Twitter and Facebook. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm not joking this time. I know I've joked about this before. But I actually I actually made accounts on Facebook and Twitter. So seriously, follow me. It, it is actually helpful. It kind of helps me stay in touch with you guys uh, in a way that's not just uh, over YouTube. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.